So this video is a bit of a rant. I read some news articles claiming that CO2 emissions this year had dropped dramatically due to the COVID lockdown, as well as some claiming that they had been steadily climbing despite lockdown. Both of these claims are fundamentally wrong and in this video I'm gonna try to explain to you exactly why the COVID lockdown isn't affecting emissions at all. To properly grasp why rising emission levels are bad, we first need to understand the carbon silicate cycle. The carbon silicate cycle is a delicate balance of the carbon and silicates in the Earth's biosphere. Today, I want to focus on a specific component in this cycle that is becoming increasingly erratic and out of control. I am of course talking about carbon dioxide. I should not be the first one to tell you how profoundly dangerous a rising carbon dioxide concentration in the Earth's atmosphere is for our planet. High CO2 levels cause climate change by trapping heat. They acidify the oceans, devastating entire marine ecosystems, and they also contribute to respiratory disease from smog and air pollution. Extreme weather, food supply disruptions, and increased wildfires are other side effects of climate change caused in part by CO2 emissions. Carbon dioxide is released naturally by the Earth's oceans, animals, soils, and volcanoes. These natural emissions are then later reabsorbed into the Earth's ecosystem through photosynthesis. Most of this photosynthesizing takes place during the summer in big forests such as the Amazon, Congo Basin, and the Indonesian jungles. This continuous natural exchange of carbon dioxide is a source of balance. From May to mid-September, atmospheric CO2 is absorbed by the masses by Earth's vegetation. And as the forests shed their leaves during the winter, the animals replenish the depleted CO2 for the plants to absorb it again the next spring, continuing the cycle indefinitely. In a natural, untouched setting, the main carbon dioxide concentration of the Earth's atmosphere would be around 250 parts per million, with a variance of 3 to 4 parts per million throughout the year. Enter humans. With the use of fossil fuels in numerous forms since the industrial revolution roughly 200 years ago, anthropogenic emissions began to increase all year emissions. Additionally, through mass deforestation we have significantly decreased Earth's plant life's capacity to reabsorb CO2, whilst at the same time increasing the needed amount of plants in order to reabsorb the excess CO2. The subsequent results would surprise absolutely no one. Overall atmospheric CO2 began to increase, ranging from slight to severe. In 1940 there was an average of 300 parts per million of carbon dioxide. By 1970 this had increased to 335, then 370 by 2000, and in 2013 400 parts per million was passed. Finally, this year's May peaked at 417 parts per million of atmospheric carbon dioxide. When you put this into a graph you get this eerie figure. It is dubbed the Keeling Curve by climatologists. It is a curved sinusoidal graph. Every year it oscillates, but disproportionately. Ever since the 19th century, carbon dioxide levels have been on a steady rise. The Keeling Curve itself is a worrying testament to the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. As should again be a surprise to absolutely no one, the imbalance of the CO2 cycle has upset the Earth's natural biosphere. Oceans are an often overlooked key component in the common silicate cycle on Earth, as oceans have the capacity to absorb vast quantities of carbon dioxide. With fewer forests around, a lot of the now overly abundant carbon dioxide gets absorbed by the oceans. Carbon dioxide is soluble in water for up to 1.5 grams per liter. When dissolved in water, carbon dioxide forms carbonic acid. And as a result, the Earth's oceans have gradually begun to acidify, absorbing over half of the anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions. The oceans are by no doubt Earth's biggest carbon dioxide deposit. On one hand, this is good because we would have over 800 parts per million in the atmosphere without them. But on the other hand, it's bad, because the warmer the oceans get, the less CO2 they absorb. And you guessed it, the myriad of marine creatures which depend on the basic ocean water for their survival. Crabs and oysters, for example, struggle increasingly to create seashells capable of withstanding the more acidic water. Scientists predict that within a couple of decades it might get so bad 
the seawater will be able to dissolve these shells entirely. As if that wasn't bad enough, the entire coral reef ecosystem would be at risk. Sure, people might shrug this off because it won't affect them directly, but you need to look back at the fundamentals of biology, the food chain, to understand the gravity of such a scenario. If the entire oceanic ecosystem collapses, so will fishing industries and the lives of over a billion people depending on seafood in order to survive. Humans are at the top of the food chain. Thinking its collapse won't affect you is not only incredibly naive, but also arrogant. Anyhow, enough about the oceans because there's plenty of trouble on the land as well. The massive deforestation has curbed the Earth's natural ability to reabsorb carbon dioxide. Among others, this means more CO2 will get absorbed into not only the oceans, but also the rain. And remember that carbon dioxide reacts with water to make carbonic acid, which now, in the air, mixes with water vapor to create acid rain. When acid rain falls, it kills more of the Earth's plants. It then also acidifies the soil, which in turn negatively affects plant growth, decreasing the amount of photosynthesized CO2 even further and yada 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 yada. Understanding all this brings us back to the articles, claiming the emissions were up, but also down. They were, but only in the context of a very small, frankly insignificant time frame. If you look at it with the added context of last year, you'll see that overall carbon dioxide emissions haven't changed at all, and that we're still gaining 2 parts per million per year. Personally, I think the article's line of thought was something along the lines of lockdown means more people at home, which means less travel, which means less emissions. But this, however, is a severely flawed line of thought, in the sense that transport-based emissions are only a drop in the ocean. Transport-based emissions make up less than 22% of our total carbon footprint. Common households, on the other hand, account for 41% of the emissions, and we've been spending a lot more time at home lately, haven't we? And transport, which is travel too, has quintupled during lockdown, which all by all means really nothing has changed. All the while, 78% of the emissions still continue undisturbed. This is exactly what people don't get about carbon emissions. Locking people into their home won't cut them, they'll instead increase in other areas. For example, transport or electrical heating to name a few. Cutting down in one area won't budge the total, which is precisely why international cooperation is so vital with issues such as these. They simply can't be solved without focusing on all aspects simultaneously. Anyways, that's it from me about climate change. I hope that at the very least cleared some stuff up. Besides, it's not really wise for anyone to conclude at this stage we are solving climate change or doing nearly enough about it. If you really want to help out with climate change during the pandemic, I would suggest you try to keep a close watch of your carbon footprint at home. There are numerous tests for it online, and if you come out negative, see what areas you could improve in to reduce your carbon footprint emissions. What is your carbon footprint? Let me know in the comments below. Climate change is only something we can solve if we all take it seriously, together. And actually work together with that science. That science is gonna be key. Okay, it'll start getting cooler. I you, wish just, you just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> hey, well, I don't think science knows, actually. So yeah, that's it. Don't ask me why it took over a month to release this video. I've been doing stuff, but I'll be uploading more sometime in the future. I don't know, this channel is kind in a tough spot. Support me on Patreon or join my Discord if you haven't done that already. We have some interesting characters there. It will be great. Yeah, it will definitely be great. By the way, did you know you can track CO2 concentrations live at www.co2.earth? I've also put some interesting articles in the description below, and do not forget to share your carbon footprint in the comments. Peace out.